Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about replacing an attic ladder, and we'd like to thank Act Accordingly for a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. And Cindy should be finishing up book 13 next month. It's going to be called Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, Book 13. Woohoo! And you can get it on Amazon. Historians say one of the earliest evidence of a ladder is cave drawings that date back around 10,000 years. They show a ladder being used to get to a honeybee nest. There was a paper published by the American Association of the Advancement of Science that new cave drawings that they're studying may date ladders back 64,000 years. So it's not really new cave drawings. (laughs) Right. So they're saying the Neanderthals might have been using ladders. This week, we'll cover some tips on what to look for when you're replacing an old attic ladder. If you have an older home, your attic ladder is usually going to be wood. Mm -hmm. And depending on your climate and how much use it got over the years, it may need to be replaced to be safe. The company Mechanical and Safety Engineering says the potential for a serious injury exists in attic ladders if the length wasn't cut properly. Stress on the hinges can cause the ladder to fail. So if it's cut too short or if it's left too long. Okay. I read an article from NBC News about a homeowner that died from a fall off an attic ladder because a step broke. And according to the World Health Organization, most ladder deaths are from falls from 10 feet or less. Hmm. The International Association of Certified Home Inspectors said common attic ladder defects reported by home inspectors are homeowners cutting into trusses to create an opening for an attic ladder, which Mm. weakens the structure. The attic ladder was fastened with improper nails or screws, which can reduce its strength and be a safety hazard. Attic ladders fastened with insufficient screws or nails, loose bolts or missing nuts. The ladder was cut too short or left too long, which can be a safety hazard because it puts too much stress on the hinges. Cracked steps on wood ladders or bent steps on aluminum ladders. The pull cord was too long, so they're concerned kids could pull the ladder down on themselves or get up in the attic, and that could be dangerous. Damaged hinges, missing insulation on attic ladders inside the home, and attic ladders that aren't fire rated in towns that require it for an attached garage. Hmm. I spoke to the company FACRO, it's F-A-K-R-O, they make attic ladders, and they said many homeowners aren't aware that many towns now require fire-rated attic ladders in attached garages, and their fire-rated ladders are rated for 60 minutes, which is a common requirement, although some towns have different time requirements, so that's something else you should be checking. Their fire-rated ladders have gaskets that expand when they're exposed to high heat, and that's going to prevent smoke and air from moving into the attic, and it's going to slow down the spread of a garage fire into the living space. Okay. It's pretty interesting, isn't it? Fascinating. (laughs) I called a few towns and asked if fire-rated attic ladders were required in an attached garage. Three towns I spoke to said they had no restrictions in the type of attic ladder in a garage. Two building inspectors said if there is firewall separation between the garage attic and the attic area above the living space, or if there's a firewall between the living space, a fire-resistant attic ladder isn't required. But if there isn't drywall or plywood to separate the spaces, you should have a fire-resistant attic ladder. And one inspector said if you have a townhouse with a common attic space, you're required to have a fire-resistant attic ladder with a 20-minute minimum rating. The U.S. Fire Administration says there are about 6,000 garage fires a year, which Hmm. results in about 30 deaths a year. They recommend not storing gas, oil, propane, paint, or varnishes in your garage. Don't overload your outlets in a garage or use an extension cord when charging power tools or plugging in appliances. You should have a 20-minute fire-rated interior door to your home that's self-closing. 
Your ceiling should have 5 8 fire-resistant drywall with all the seams taped. It's called Type X drywall. Hmm. And you should have half-inch drywall walls with all the seams taped. You should have a heat alarm, not a smoke alarm. And that heat alarm should be rated at 175 to 250 degrees. They found that smoke alarms can give false alarms because of car exhaust or dust or debris in the air. Right. For attic ladders inside your home, an insulated ladder is going to reduce energy loss, save you money, and make the area around the ladder more comfortable. So you should be comparing the R value when you're looking at different insulated ladders. What does that mean? R is resistance to heat flow. And the larger the number, the more energy efficient it's going to be. When I spoke to FACRO, they said they have uninsulated, insulated, and super insulated ladders. How cool is that? If you have an older home, you can add an insulated cover over it for better insulation. There are new requirements that pull-down ladders have to have the same level of insulation as the rest of the attic above the living space. Hmm. And some attic cover companies are Batic Door, it's B-A-T-T-I-C, capital D-O-O-R, Attic Gator, it's Attic and then G-A-T-O-R, Attic Seal, and Hatch Stuffer, it's H-A-T-C-H, capital S-T-U-F-F-E-R. Hmm. Attic ladders are generally a kit or a system. You have a frame that's attached to the ladder and the cover, and you're securing this frame to the joists in the ceiling. Hmm. That attic ladder can be in sections that fold down, or it can be telescopic, or it can unfold in a scissor style, which is pretty wild looking. Many of the telescopic and the scissor style ladders are designed for small openings. And attic ladders can be wood, steel, or aluminum, and they're going to be rated for their load capacity. I looked at some attic ladders at Lowe's and Home Depot. Mm -hmm. At Lowe's, they had 27 wood ladders, 17 steel, and 9 aluminum. One style was sliding, 42 were folding, 8 were that scissor style, and only two were marked insulated that I saw. The load capacity was 250, 300, 350, or 375 pounds. At Home Depot, they had 34 wood ladders, 21 steel ladders, and 12 aluminum ladders, and their load capacity was 250, 300, and 375. I saw 42 were marked as insulated, and 49 were marked as adjustable. There's also quite a difference in the weight of these attic ladders. I looked at a bunch of insulated ladders that were designed for 8 to 10 foot ceiling heights. Two steel ladders I looked at, one was 71 pounds, one was 84 pounds. Two wood ladders, one was 75, one was 110. Two aluminum ladders, one was 55 pounds, the other one was 67 pounds. And one of the scissor style steel ladders I looked at, 154 pounds. No way. So that makes a big difference if you know yes. you and a helper are trying to lift this into, a, into an opening up into the attic. Mm-hmm. Before you shop for a ladder, you need to know the rough opening size. And this is the area that that ladder frame is going to fit into. You don't want to just measure the door on the old ladder. You want to remove the trim around the ladder cover and measure the space between the joists and the headers or get up into the attic and measure the space between the joists and the headers. Common sizes are 22 and a half by 54 inches, 25 and a half by 54 and 30 by 60. And small openings can be something like 22 by 31. Hmm. You then need to measure the height from the finished floor to the finished ceiling for most ladders. If you have a ladder with a small opening, that ladder may extend up into the attic space and over the attic space rather than just staying above the cover. So most fold-down ladders, when you fold it up and you lift it up, that ladder is just above the cover. Right. But with some ladders in small openings, they'll extend up and then into the attic space. So you need to know how much room you have. For those ladders, you need to measure from the floor to the attic floor. And then you need to know how much space it goes above and beyond the opening. Ah. Know what weight rating you want. Who's going to be using the... Was that hard to say? It was. Who's going to be using your ladder? And are you going to be bringing up heavy items into the attic? 
in general, a heavy load rating is going to be a more stable ladder. Mm -hmm. Wood ladders are going to be less expensive. They can be heavy, though, and they can be affected by attic heat and cold over time. And depending on your climate, they can be affected by high humidity levels. Steel ladders are very durable and strong, although they can be heavy. Aluminum ladders are lighter in weight, and they're not going to be affected by attic heat and cold. Compare how much area is needed to swing open folding ladders and the area needed below the opening or the landing space for the feet. Mm -hmm. Some boxes will have a diagram or there'll be a diagram online. A standard folding ladder needs five to six feet of swing clearance. Mm. You should see if the ladders have a handrail. Compare the depth of the steps if you have large feet. And standard ladders have a pull cord to pull down the cover. Some styles have a pole to pull down the cover and pull down the ladder, which can be safer with kids. Okay. I recently replaced an old wooden attic ladder in the attached garage of the house I'm in now. Congratulations. So, so to do the project, I measured the distance from the floor to the ceiling and then the rough opening. The attic ladder I put in is a Louisville aluminum attic ladder. It's rated at 375 pounds. You're not going to spell that? L-O-U-I-S-V-I-L-L-E. Mm -hmm. So this ladder was just held in place with 16 penny nails. I'm sure it was as old as the house. You'll have either nails or screws or both holding the old ladder in place. You can use a pull and pry bar or a reciprocating saw for the nails and a socket wrench or an impact driver if it's held in place with lag screws or a drill if you have decking screws. Mm. I removed the trim around the opening so I could get between the ladder system and the joist. I used a reciprocating saw to cut off the legs from the bottom of the ladder so it's lighter. So when I Smart. removed it, yeah. And then I used a metal cutting blade to cut through all of the nails to remove the old ladder. I cut through the nails starting at one end and working down both sides, leaving the last two so my son could help me hold it as I cut those last two nails and drop down. <laughs> The rough opening for the old ladder was 25 and a half by 54, and the opening size required for the new ladder I was putting in was 22 and a half by 54. So did you screw up? So, <laughs> well, I knew I was going to add two pieces of lumber there. So in the attic space above the garage, the joists are two by sixes, and then the joists above the living space mm -hmm. in the house are two by tens. Anyway, I cut two pieces of lumber, two two by sixes, for the sides to make that space 22 and a half inches wide, and I held them in place with three 16 penny nails driven into the ends. Okay. For most attic ladders, you need to support it in the attic before you put in nails or screws to hold it in place permanently. Mm -hmm. So for this, I had to measure the front and back of the frame and know that distance because I put up one by fours in the front and the back of the rough opening. So when I lifted this attic ladder up into the attic, I could drop it down and rest the frame on that, and it would hold it in place while I drove in my screws and my lag screws. And make sure you pick the hinge side of your ladder and where it's going to be attached to the header on that side of the opening so you can measure back from that location the distance for your support pieces. Yeah. For the ladder I put in, they had a plastic strap that prevented the ladder from opening up while you're lifting it into the attic. Probably a smart idea. Yeah, so read your instructions before you begin your project and start removing or cutting things off the ladder. Like you normally do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I read the instructions. If your attic ladder has a pull cord, put that on before you lift the attic ladder into the attic. And this is a great project for two people, <laughs> so it's easier to lift up into the attic. And you're going to need a step ladder to help lift that attic ladder up into the attic. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Another good thing to review when you're reading the manual is what tools are you going to need, and then you need to make sure that you have those up in the attic when you're up in the attic and you're lifted in place and drop it on top of those support boards <laughs> and a light. Yes, headlamp. When you lift the new ladder up into the opening, you want to get the hinge side against the header and square it up in the opening. You're going to use shims on both sides. For the ladder I put in, they wanted you to use two and a half inch decking screws to hold it in place before you put your bigger lag screws to permanently hold it. Mm -hmm. Then they want you to have your helper inside the garage to pull down on the cover so you open up the ladder. Hmm. The problem is, 
when I did my measurements, I was off by just a little bit. And this is a hot day. And I love doing these kind of projects with my sons, Mm -hmm. you know, so I can feel like I'm teaching them something, you know. How do they feel about it? (laughs) It's always painful for everyone, usually. (laughs) But what's crazy is I mismeasured just a little bit. So I think he's kidding around. I'm like, okay, you know, pull down on the cord and and open up the door. And he's saying it won't move. So I think he's just messing with me. Mm -hmm. So I start pushing and... You know, the opening is not opening. So measuring is an important part of this project. Every project. (laughs) Once my son removed the one support piece of wood and moved it slightly (laughs) where it should be, we opened it, and then I put in pilot holes in the joists for the lag screws. The frame had holes and markings for where all the lag screws needed to be, and make sure you follow that exactly. Right. Once the lag screws are holding the ladder system, you can score the excess length off the shims with a utility knife and break those off. Then you can remove those one by four supports that held the frame. Mm -hmm. And then I removed that plastic strap and pulled down the legs. Okay. Based on the ceiling height, I had to cut down the legs with a jigsaw. Then I added adjustable foot sections to the bottom of the legs and bolted them in place. Mm -hmm. Then I cut wood trim to cover the space around the frame. So fancy. Pr- other than one small error, <laughs> it's not a bad project. It's good. Some top rated attic ladders come from Facro, F A K R O, Louisville. We spelled that earlier. Mm-hmm. Werner, W E R N E R, and Bessler, B E S S L E R. Do you have anything else to add? When you're replacing an attic ladder, you want to make sure you know the rough opening size, the height, and depending on the style, you're either going to be measuring from the floor to the ceiling or the floor to the attic floor. You want to know the load capacity and how much clearance you have to swing the ladder if it's folding and your landing area, what tools you're going to need to do it. I would compare warranties and check for ANSI, OSHA, or ASTM certified or compliant. What are those? ASTM is the American Society for Testing and Materials. Well, it used to be the American Society for Testing and Materials, but now it's an international company, yeah. so that it's not just America anymore. So I don't know why they don't change it to ISTM. <laughs> ANSI is the American National Standards Institute, and OSHA is Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Okay, let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, CastBox, or your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our eBooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, Books 1 through 12. Soon book 13 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. And you can follow us on Instagram, fixithomeimprovement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Do you have a